It's coming up later. But first, the big story we are following at this hour is the countdown to the sequester. Because in two short days, at the stroke of midnight, March the 1st, $85 billion in automatic spending cuts will be triggered. But even with the clock ticking closer and closer to that deadline, our alarmist in chief, President Panic himself, he did not feel the need to be at the White House today, nor did he think it was important enough to visit Capitol Hill and try and hammer out a bipartisan solution to the mess that he himself has put the country in. Now, instead of focusing on fixing the problem, he decided to take his sequestration scare tactics on the road today with a visit to the Commonwealth of Virginia. And as usual, his teleprompter was loaded to the brim with more of the same irresponsible end of the world rhetoric that we've all grown accustomed to. In fact, his choice of words was so ridiculously similar to what we've heard from him exactly a week ago, we could not resist on this program, but put together a how did he highlight reel of President Panic in action? Do not adjust your screen. This is not deja vu that you're seeing. You're not seeing double. Sadly, this is the, quote, leadership in the age of Obama. In a few days, Congress might allow a series of immediate, painful, arbitrary budget cuts to take place known in Washington as the sequester. Now, if Congress allows this meat cleaver approach to take place, it will jeopardize our military readiness. It will eviscerate job-creating investments in education and energy and medical research. Early education, like Head Start and Early Start, would be eliminated for nearly a 1,000 children. Border Patrol agents will see their hours reduced. FBI agents will be furloughed. Federal prosecutors will have to close cases and let criminals go. Air traffic controllers and airport security will see cutbacks, and that which means more delays at airports across the country. Tens of thousands of parents will have to scramble to scramble to find child care for their kids. Hundreds, Hundreds of thousands of, thousands of Americans, Americans will lose access to access primary care and preventive care, care and like preventive flu vaccinations, like cancer flu vaccinations and cancer screening. So these cuts are wrong. They're not smart. They are not fair. They will hurt our economy. They're a self-inflicted wound that doesn't have to happen. They don't have to happen. Now, I've laid out a plan that details how we can pay down our deficit in a way that's balanced and responsible. A balanced plan. One that pairs more spending cuts with tax reform, that closes special interest loopholes. And the second I get that bill on my desk, I will sign it into law. But I've got to get Congress to pass it. None, None of us, us will get 100% get of, of what we want. But nobody should want these cuts to go through. All right, a classic. If and when the Obama sequester takes effect on Friday, it's because the president was more concerned with fear-mongering than finding a solution to the problem that he himself created. Joining me now with some insight, Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison of Minnesota. Congressman, welcome back, sir. You bet. Uh, I guess he's, that's what we can describe as staying on message, uh, something the Democratic Party, I would argue, is very good at. Let me ask You're you. You're pretty good at it, too. I, I, well, I mean, thank you. you know, quite frankly, you are the worst excuse for a journalist I've ever seen. This I am the worst. I can't hear you. You heard me. I didn't know. Say it again. I didn't hear you. I heard you. I mean, what you just displayed was not journalism. It was yellow journalism. It wasn't anything close to trying to tell the American people what's really going on. And I, I mean, it's just shocking. To yellow me. journalism? You, the, to play you, Obama yes. in his own words is yellow journalism? No. Well, with the background music and with your lead up before you, you let the president talk, let me tell you, I was here. The pre everything the president said is absolutely true. Yeah. And for you to try to make the American people think that it isn't is deceptive on your part. Well, and yeah. it's a breach of everything, cons every, every, every journalistic ethic I have ever heard of was just violated by you. And the really? president was truthful. The president was honest. The president, what the president said was dead on accurate. And for you to say the president is to blame here is ridiculous. I was there August 2011 when the Republicans, your party, which you shamelessly I'm not a Republican. represent. Let me you, are the you are nothing but a Republican. I'm a, no, no. And, right. Yes, sir, you are. Sir, yes, you are. Sir, I'm you a registered. I'm and, a re and, well, sir. Well, let me just say, I no, am not no, a registered I'm Republican. Say this. You, I'm a you registered are, conservative. You are a shill for the Republican Party. I am a registered and you conservative, You alibi sir. them constantly. You uh, alibi them 100% of the time. Keep going. You don't keep do anything else. Okay. Well, good. Let me just say this. Keep what the branding. president said is that what the president said is absolutely true. 
the president, the people watching your show should ignore all of the all of the commentary that you put in and all of the uh, hype music that you put on and should pay attention to what the president actually said because what the president said was true. The president, you by the way, are inaccurate when you say that the president is to blame here. He's not. It was the Republicans in August 2011 said that they were going to cause the American economy to default on debts we already acquired unless they got deep, deep and substantial cuts. And we ended up with a downgrade because of what the Republicans did. And after that, we set up this thing called the 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 uh, commit the super uh, committee. And when all the Republican members on that super committee had already pledged to Grover Norquist, they would not raise revenue, only do cuts. And then after it failed, as it always was going to, we ended up with. Right, let me ask you a question. I've given no, you no, plenty. Wait a minute. I've you given said you... I could rant, and Hello? I am. I've given and you so... plenty of time to rant, Congressman. Now, we'll now let it's you, we'll let sir, you get a word. Here in. Again. Go ahead. Oh, you're so nice to give me a word on my own program. Okay, I... Let me ask you a question. But as a matter of fact, let me ask you. Fact, you fact, let me ask you. You said the president was true. Like, Congressman, calm. I will this. give you your chance. You I gave you three minutes too. to rant. No, you, calm I, down. You, 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 no, I gave you, you three minutes. That. Relax. I've and got a question for you. Are you. You were invited on the program to answer a question. Right. So I want to give you a couple of questions. You said. No, and I'm going to. You said, Congressman. Congressman, let me ask you a question. Why are you so angry? You're so angry. Let me ask you a question. I'm not angry. I'm laughing at you because I think this is actually comical. I'm laughing at you. All right. Here's my question. Here's my question for you. And it's not the first time. Listen, I invited you on. I gave you three minutes to rant. Now let me ask you a question. We'll have a discussion. We'll have a dialogue. In, in the spirit of bipartisanship, let's find a dialogue. I want to ask you this. I thought you weren't a Republican. Max, I'm a registered you conservative. Lie? I am, yeah, sir. Right. You want to make a thousand dollar bet that I'm a registered conservative? You want to make a ten thousand dollar bet? I don't bet. I don't bet. I'm just telling you, I'm a registered conservative. You can. Buy, I wrote a nah, book called whatever. Conservative Victory. I didn't write Republican what, do Victory. Do you have a question for me, sir? Yes, yes I do. All right, now. First of all, it was Max Baucus and it was Bob Woodward that said that the president requested this sequester, point one. Point number two, my question to you is very simple. Barack Obama, because you said that what he said is the true. The Budget Control Act Here's was my question. down the American Here's my Republic question. by the Republican Party. Congressman. Sequester is a provision of the Budget Control Congressman. Act. Congressman, relax. The Republicans are responsible for Here. the Budget Control Act. Right, right, right. I got it. You know, I, I, I know you're a broken record. Now let me get you my question. You're a broken record. Okay, thank you. Here's my question. So Barack Obama said in 2008 when he was running for office that George Bush was irresponsible and unpatriotic for when he became president we had 10 trillion dollars in debt. You we now have 16 trillion what, we now have 16 trillion dollars in debt Congressman. House. I'm here to speak for myself. 16 trillion dollars in debt. About, you want to talk I want to ask okay. you is you wanna it do something about that? Here's my question. I got an answer for you. You want to do something about the 16 trillion? Let's do something. Let's close polls oh on large corporations. Yeah. Let's say that yachts and jets should not be something you can write off. Let's say that ExxonMobil and, and Chevron should not get a tax rebate and a subsidy. Let's start there. Let's say that people who are, who get to pay less on well, right, on, Congressman, uh, you did, you're ranting really well. well. Well, right. can I well, ask you, you a like question? Saying, you is it, it, here's a simple question. If you don't is like what it I'm saying, but you're a bully, it, Sean, and I'm not backing down to you. Is it immoral, is it immoral to you are put immoral. 16 so and a half lies? I'm immoral? What did I yes. do that's immoral? I didn't do you anything that's immoral. Mr. You, you say things that aren't true. Uh, give me one example, sir. Well, to try to say that it is uh, that it is uh, the president's fault and he is to blame is wrong and it's a it's lie. not it's his not fault true. that we have 16 it's trillion no. in debt he didn't add six okay. no, trillion we didn't add no, six no, no. trillion dollars the to president. the debt since he's been president no no no, no you, we no, did you, add six you, trillion to debt since he's been well, president what about the other 10 All right let's talk about the Congressman, other 10 you are Who's a total waste of time i'm moving on because our audience yeah. deserves better thank you for being with us i tried to give you a fair shot and coming up did abc news deceptively edit an interview with the